I am the vine and you the branches Remain in me as I remain in you You will bear great fruit in me A new commandment I give you Even as I have loved you of one another. I am the vine and you the branches. Remain in me as I remain in you. You will bear great fruit in me. No greater love is seven for your friend. I am the vine and you the branches. Remain in me as I remain in you. You will bear great fruit in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And my dear friends, rejoicing still in the Easter season, let us continue to believe in the power of the resurrection, the power of new life, despite our um, failings and difficulties that we're facing in life. Let us allow the Lord to breathe His life and peace into our troubled lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, to my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit, and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles When Saul got to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, they could not believe he was really a disciple. Barnabas, however, took charge of him, introduced him to the apostles, and explained how the Lord had appeared to Saul and spoken to him on his journey, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. 
Saul now started to go round with them in Jerusalem, preaching fearlessly in the name of the Lord. But after he had spoken to the Hellenists and argued with them, they became determined to kill him. When the brothers knew, they took him to Caesarea and sent him off from there to Tarsus. The churches throughout Judea, Galilee and Samaria were now left in peace, building themselves up, living in the fear of the Lord, and filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise Him. May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow down before Him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth. Before him shall bend all who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your To him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord, that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, our love is not to be just words or mere talk, but something real and active. Only by this can we be certain that we are children of the truth and be able to quieten our conscience in his presence, whatever accusations it may raise against us. Because God is greater than our conscience and he knows everything. My dear people, if we cannot be condemned by our own conscience, we need not be afraid in God's presence, and whatever we ask him, we shall receive, because we keep his commandments and live the kind of life that he wants. His commandments are these, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and that we love one another as he told us to. Whoever keeps his commandments lives in God, and God lives in him. We know that he lives in us by the Spirit that he has given us. The Word of the Lord Alleluia, Alleluia 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 Remain in me as 
Yes, I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I've spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is Mission Impossible Sunday. It is not some movie drama, but real drama. Starring, not me, but St. Paul, the Apostle Impossible. Why do we say that? Well, Paul, in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we are told that the other apostles um, did not believe that he has become a believer, a believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, that the previous persecutor of the church was so vehement in going after the Christians and even killing, remember St. Stephen's story, that now has seemed to hmm, become one of them and even preaching in the name of Christ. And so they were doubtful, fearful, is this a trap? And so this is really like the Apostle Impossible. Now we have another man, Barnabas. What a beautiful name. You know what does Barnabas mean? Barnabas means the son of encouragement. The son of encouragement. For Barnabas, he wasn't like the other, the other apostles. He wasn't frightened of Paul. In fact, he was full of courage and that's why he could encourage others. He was fearless and he went to meet Paul and got to know Paul's story and to know that Paul for real is a follower of Christ, that he's been touched by Christ and therefore he's now preaching uh, in the name of Christ. So we can see Barnabas who is fearless of Paul and Paul who is fearless proclaiming the name of Jesus. And in our first reading, it is very clear that there is no fear. Why is there no fear? As St. John tells us in his letter, that love drives out fear. When we have love, we will have no fear within us. But where is this love from? It is from the Holy Spirit. And at the end of the first reading, we are told that they were filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? We're coming to the end of Easter tide and we're nearing the Feast of Pentecost. And so I think it's a good time to meditate more on the person of the Holy Spirit. And so who is the Holy Spirit? Especially who is the Holy Spirit for us, for me, for you? 
We have to know who the Holy Spirit is in Himself. The Holy Spirit is the inner life and the inner love within the Trinity. That this outpouring of love from the Father to the Son and the total reception of this love by the Son and then, just like the Father, the Son pours out this love that He has received totally, the self-emptying, um, back to the Father. The Father receives this totally and then outpours this love back to the Son. And this outpouring, receiving of love between Father and Son within the Trinity, that love is so strong that it is a person and that is the Holy Spirit. And guess what? We too can be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And that is why there is no fear, because it is fear that keeps us from relating with others. It is fear that makes us want to hide behind closed doors. By being filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus walks among them in the closed room to breathe forth peace and forgiveness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And the second reading affirms that the Holy Spirit lives in us. The second reading says, We know God lives in us by what or whom? By the Spirit that He has given us. This Spirit is a gift. The gift of the inner life and the inner love of the Trinity. And which is why the Gospel, Jesus says to His disciples, Make your home in me as I make my home in you. So, where is home truly? Home truly is in God. That's where we will find security, refuge, peace, tranquility, that we know that we belong that we know that we are safe to be alone and yet happy to be with others. That is what home is all about. Just like the Trinity, three persons but one God, that they know themselves as person individually, but because they love each other, that is so strong that there are one God. And it's only in this way, in this state of belonging, of peace, of love and mutual um, connection and communication, can we then bear fruit, that we're able to breathe forth life, breathe forth mercy, peace, understanding, empathy. And that is why in the Gospel, it, it always keeps relating um, how we are to abide in God make our home in God, but to also bear fruit, and bear fruit not just a little bit, but in abundance. But there's something that's needed. Jesus says that God will prune us. Pruning is painful, but needed. It is to make us even more fruitful, to be able to channel our energies, our spirits, to where God wants us to grow. Not where we want to grow, but where God wants us to grow. And where God nourishes these areas, it will bear fruit. And so, let us allow God, if we trust God enough uh, with His pruning shears, to cut away those bad habits or those patterns that don't bring us life, like self-doubts, like always comparing ourselves harshly with others, like feeling that we are victimized all the time, or sometimes in, when we're very tired, we just write people off and say, okay, stop, enough. I, I just don't want to communicate anymore. That we can prune away these areas, but instead allow God's Spirit to, to be outpoured into us, for us to be able to open our hearts to receive this grace, this washing of the Spirit into us and over us, so that thus, consoled, we can then in turn be like Barnabas. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we become fearless and we 
have this courage to go forth and encourage others. And encourage others to do what? For them to connect with God, for them to abide with God, and to make their home in God, just as God desires to make His home in us. And responding to what we have heard in the Gospel, let us now profess what we believe in. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the providential love of our God, we approach Him with confidence that He will provide for our needs and the needs of our world. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church remain a true vine that bears great fruit for the glory of God and the service of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. That healthcare workers receive the necessary support to care for the sick and the ailing with skill and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. That those seeking employment and direction in their work will find meaningful jobs and a just wage to support themselves and their families. Let us pray to the Lord. That we who are gathered around this Eucharistic table will follow Jesus' commandment to love others in word and in deed. Let us pray to the Lord. And now, in the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our own intentions, especially those of our family members. God of peace, with tenderness and compassion, you call us to fullness of life in your presence. Inspire us to build communities where all will flourish and find welcome. Hear our prayers, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you have become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, 
every land, every people, exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Francis and Claire, Saint Anthony, and Blessed Allegra, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Save his command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's difficult. <laughs> very, very difficult. I lost a priest, 30 years old, uh, just one year of ordination, four days ago. 
we are going through a very critical situation in the wake of this second wave of covid-19 pandemic more than 3000 people have died and 0.38 million population have been affected in last 24 hours the hospitals are over flooded with the patients we need support in the form of protection equipment medical support oxygen concentrators pulse oximeters people are not able to go for work that reduces their income that brings more poverty so maybe we need to support them with the dry rations we see in front of our eyes people struggling for their life all the medical institutions are working 24 hours to save lives but then we have limitations because the numbers are increasing day by day if this pace continues the situation is going to be really really critical what we have decided as caris on behalf of the catholic church in singapore is to urgently raise about $300,000 the money will be used to set up basic and urgent medical management facilities the money will also be used to buy oxygen tanks concentrators ventilators and other types of medical equipment and we hope that with this effort of ours we can stand in solidarity together with our brothers and sisters in india and help them through this very very trying times so we do hope that you will be generous open up your hearts and help all these brothers and sisters of ours in christ get through this very difficult time thank you so much for your support let us be in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in india as one church let us make hope happen scan the qr code and donate generously help us reach the urgent target of $300,000 to the Caris India Covid Response Plan now thank you for your generosity